discuss his beautiful anatomy of the, of the shoulder and the rotator cuff. Ivan? Thank you very much. First of all, I want to explain that I had to talk about the shoulder cuff first and then about the, the rotator interval to introduce the calf surgery and the arthroplasty and resurfacing surgery. But these two structures are very difficult to, to separate, to explain it. So I will do a common presentation about these two structures. We divide the attachment of the cuff in the proximal humerus in three insertion areas. The supescapular tendon attaches in the anterior ara, area in the lesser tuberosity. The lesser, the lesser tuberosity and the attachment of this muscle are covered by the anterior lamina. Uh, sorry, wait a moment because it's too... The match is not seem very good. No, but the color is not, is, is not good, but it's a problem of the computer. Uh, the anterior lamina, this is the coracomeral ligament, and the anterior lamina extends with the shoulder, remains in external rotation. In this transverse section, we can see the suprascapular tendon attaching in the lesser tuberosity. This is the suprascapular tendon. This is the lesser tuberosity. And this suprascapular tendon attaching in the lesser tuberosity and his relation with the anterior labrum. The thickness, the thickness of the suprascapular tendon is considerable as can be seen in, the cor in this coronal section. The space between the lesser tuberosity and the coracoid process may create a coracoid impingement. The supraspinatus uh, tendon attaches in the superior area behind the bicipital groove uh, and the rotator interval. This is in, uh, a slide that we can see in the anterior edge of the supraspinatus uh, tendon, muscle and tendon, is in relation with the posterior fascicle of the coracomeral ligament, and it forms the posterior border of interval, interval rotator. The supraspinatus tendon crosses below the supracromial space. In this frontal section, we can see this space and the attachment of the supraspinatus tendon in the lateral border of the grid to tuberosity and how it crosses below the acromioclavicular joint. This tendon attachment also is covered by the posterior cord of the coracoumeral, coracoumeral ligament and the greater tuberosity. But I will talk about it is a stabilizing factor of the long head of this tendon later. The posterior area, the infraspinatus and the teres minor muscle are attached in a posterior side of the greater tuberosity. This area is the measure of the rotator cuff attachment. We can see it with a cranial view like this or in a posterior view like this. These muscles are a real muscle wrap in the posterior part of the grid tuberosity. Its muscle belly is a rival more distal than the supraspinatus muscle and suprascapularis muscle. The anterior superior part of the calf this part of the calf are, uh, is more tendinous than the posterior part, supraspinatus, supraspinatus, and uh, infraspinatus at teres minor muscle. To summarize, three attachment areas in the proximal part of the humerus: anterior area, superior, and posterior area, and one ligamentous middle area the rotator interval to stabilize the humeral head and it's an easy way to access 
to the joint preserving calf muscles. This rotator interval is a space between the superior border of the supraescapularis tendon and the anterior border of the supraspinatus muscle tendon. It contains the coracoumeral ligament, the tendon of the long head of biceps, and the superior glenumeral ligament. Here we can see an schematic picture of the rotator interval in blue. Uh, between superior edge of supraescapularis and, and the anterior edge of supraspinatus muscle. Remember that we found the coracoumeral ligament, superior glenumeral ligament, and the long head of biceps tendon in this interval. This is a dissection to see the coracoumeral ligament. It shows when the shoulder is in inferior transla uh, translation. Patel described this ligament in 1996. He described it with two bundles, anterior and posterior bundle. The anterior bundle falls down over the supraescapularis tendon. This is the expansion fall down, falling down the supraescapularis tendon. And it prevents the inferior and anterior translation in internal rotation. Posterior bundle close to the anterior edge of supraspinatus muscle, we will see uh, the shoulder, uh, when the shoulder is in internal rotation, as the picture. This bundle prevents the inferior and the anterior translation in internal rotation of the shoulder. Here is, it is tense, the ligament. Here we can see the two bundles in internal rotation on the left and the posterior bundle strain, external rotation on the right and the anterior bundle strain. Two bundles open as a fan in their insertion from the lesser tuberosity to the great tuberosity and this is a stabilizing sling for the long head of the biceps tendon in the rotator cuff and in the rotator cuff as Werner described in his histoanatomic study. Remember, the long head of biceps tendon crosses between two tuberosities. The internal rotator... Uh, wait a moment. Here is a video of this internal rotator. Here is the coracoumeral ligament. Different fascicles of the coracoumeral ligament. When we move the different bundles tensed in internal rotation. And now we see the long head of biceps tendon. We move the tendon and we see here, the image is not good, but we can see below the ligament moves the tendon of the long head of biceps. Supraescapularis muscle, supraspinatus. Now we rejected the supraspinatus muscle. We have done osteotomy of the spine and the clavicle. We rejected the muscle. In the, me in the medial part, we see the supraescapular nerve crossing the notch, the coracoid notch, spinoglenoid ligament. Now we cut the coracoumeral ligament and the superior glenumeral ligament. Here, in the joint, we can see the long head of biceps tendon that goes to the intertuberosity space. Here is the tendon. Different type of uh, tendon. It depends the contribution to the posterior labrum or the anterior labrum. But it's important that uh, realize that when we open the internal rotation, rotator, the humeral head is exposed. And clearly, 
uh, without resection of any 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 muscle belly. Thank you very much.